Okay, awesome. Uh, thank you, John, for, for letting me uh, in, and thank you for everyone uh, for joining. Uh, my name is Philip Babic, as you may know, as you can see on the screen. Uh, I am a Google developer expert for Android and Kotlin, and today I'll be talking about a topic that is really, really near and dear to me, but not a lot of people actually talk about these things, which is communities and how you can build up uh, strong communities, how you can individually create a big impact in someone's life, but also how you can um, create initiatives which, uh, you know, uh, attract more people and then you can make an even bigger impact. So, so just a second. Yeah. Uh, so uh, as I mentioned, I'll be talking about uh, a bit about myself or how I uh, started uh, learning development or got into IT and then how I got into community engagement um, and how from those engagements I realized that we should have a bit more uh, of self selfless initiatives. So things where you come in and help someone else, not for your personal benefit, um, perhaps, but rather for uh, the benefit of that individual or a group of people. Uh, then I'll be talking about, uh, you know, some, some of the things that we got from those initiatives, some of the results we got, and some of the things that got in our, in our way and how we adapted to those things. So as I mentioned, um, I'm a Google developer expert for Android and Kotlin. And if you don't know what that is, that, that's, that's a real nice uh, title or program where you can uh, be based on your community engagement and your general uh, expertise in uh, certain topics. You can become a part of these uh, individuals that you know try to share their knowledge all over the world. And then uh, through that uh, sharing of knowledge, they try to impact certain people or groups of people and you know help them kickstart their career or you know fix their... Um, some of the issues that they might have on their projects and stuff like that. So um, I wasn't always a Google developer expert. I became uh, one uh, a year ago, something like that. S but basically four years or sorry, four or and a half, five years ago, I started off with no knowledge of uh, programming in general or IT for that matter. Um, this meant that, you know, it was really hard for me to jump into the thing. And if you think back to your beginnings, I can imagine you had the same uh, same process where there was just too much content. You know, you kind of threw yourself uh, into different things. At least that's what I did. Uh, I managed to get into an internship with zero knowledge. So I started working 24 seven, which meant that essentially I burned out uh, in a few months. And that was a bad thing because I kind of started, uh, you know, I was, I was feeling depressed and I was, it wasn't really uh, all that uh, well in my head, I guess, but I did learn a lot just because I worked uh, all the time and I was reading tons of tutorials and stuff like that. And I kept going, even though I wasn't feeling that well, because um, I had, I had the, the thought that everything's going to make sense in a while. I, I just, you know, figured, you know, uh, the more time I put into the, um, into my learning uh, process and the more time I put into coding, into reading about coding, eventually it's going to uh, become easier, right? I'm <laughs> sorry. And that's kind of what happened. You know, there's, I, I would say that this is the philosophy of life where when, whenever you want to get into something, uh, it's always hard at the, uh, at the very beginning when you don't know anything about the topics or, you know, if you're trying to get into sports, the same thing. But over time, you, you know, you pass over these obstacles and things become much, much easier. You start going tr uh, back through all the you know pain points in your life or that learning process about all the uh, you start thinking about all the burnouts and finally you realize you know you're probably not the only person with that experience and um, I can't really ask for a show of hands but if I if we were in our live conference um, you, there were, there would probably be a lot of hands up in the air uh, you know feeling the same way so I realized really quickly let's say about five six months into my career so to say, um, that community engagement is something really powerful. Um, I saw a friend, um, a former colleague back then, doing a talk on Android, and there was about 50 people uh, in the room. And uh, you know, after an hour of just you know sharing some some of the knowledge that person had, they were all all really happy to be there, and we were all you know communicating and hanging out. Something that you can't really do in these pandemic times. So uh, at least I uh, hope. Um, you know, you're taking some precautions if you do that. Uh, but, you know, we were hanging out and we I just realized that by, you know, sitting on a stage for half an hour, for 20 minutes, 15 minutes, and just sharing something hard that you had to learn can help others so much by 
just showing me showing them what not to do and what to do of course so th then i realized you know it really hit me that community effort is something that i really want to work on through uh, my entire career and i started slowly writing uh, articles writing some tutorials um doing more speaking engagements or doing uh, my first speaking engagements and then more and more over the next couple of years and th this also got me into some uh, other conferences, uh, international conferences such as this one, um, and some other um, you know projects where I could you know be a part of the, part of a book team on the Ray Wenderlich team, and th there's just like a lot of different things that community engagement opened up for me, and I got to share my knowledge uh, to others as well. So I realized you know there's this awesome community in Android, and I th I feel like we have one of the best community. Uh, IT in general has one of the best communities as an industry where. We don't really look down on people as much. We we are all uh, really welcoming. We are all, all really friendly. We are trying to help out everyone and you know help uh, help them learn. So it's a joint effort, and uh, because of because of that, whatever small bit we do to help uh, other people in, in the same industry, we're making the community uh, even better than it is. So I often say that the community as is only as good as we kind of try to make it right uh, through our uh, engagement. So. One of the ways I, I realized that we can help out in the community, and I guess this is why we're all here today, is you know giving talks, uh, sharing your problems or your problems and how you encounter, encounter those problems and how you fix them uh, or how you overcame them. Um, also, you know, writing general content or recording content. If you look in the back, you can see my green screen uh, for work. So. Um, and recording any, any type of content or writing any type of content can mean a lot. But also mentoring, you know, just a small meeting every Sunday for 50 minutes, half an hour can do a lot for another person, even though it doesn't take uh, as much of your time. But of course, you have to try and not burn out. Um, but what I realized with all of these things is that we usually focus on the on the folks, folks in the community that have at least some experience, at least some knowledge, right? Uh, a lot of initiatives when you look around and a lot of uh, conference talks, a lot of meetups, a lot of workshops and things like that are often um, focused at people who have at least some knowledge, which means that there's a lot of people who don't really get any, any lo love, so to say. So, you know, people who have absolutely no knowledge but want to get into uh, IT, for example, or like so some uh, branch of IT. Those people have a really hard time because they, it, if they don't find a mentor or a guide or something like that, they're really going to have a hard time just like everyone else had. So I realized that if you just have a couple of ideas, if you have uh, you know, so, some things you want to achieve, but you're not sure if you can do it yourself, communities can help you out there and you can turn an idea into something really, really great, which is kind of what I'm trying to, um, or what I'll be talking about today as well. So we took a step back, a couple of friends and I uh, took a step back and we realized, you know, Beginnings are really hard, as I mentioned. You know, if you don't have any kind of uh, a guideline to, in your learning process, you have so much content out there that just overwhelms you, and you can burn out just based on the amount of information that you'll need to learn. Or you think that you have to learn in, let's say, three months or six months or whatever period you feel um, works for yourself, right? Well, why don't we try and do something about it? And a couple of friends and I sat down uh, for a beer and we, we thought about different uh, initiatives or like different things we can do to try and do something about it, try, to try and provide a platform for complete beginners to get into programming, into development and all sorts of things in IT. So we thought of a really cool project we now call the Android Academy. Um, it's basically a community-driven in initiative. It's fully volunteer, fully free. Uh, so we don't really you know, ask for any kind of money or, or any kind of uh, payment uh, to get into the academy uh, of, as, as, except for, you know, enthusiasm and just sheer will. Um, and we also don't really rely on, you know, making it a big marketing thing or like a product that we want to sell. So we thought of a project that's supposed to be like a streamlined flow of lectures where we get really experienced developers uh, teaching best practices about the basics of... Uh, of course, this was the Android Academy, so the basics of uh, Java and Kotlin uh, in the last couple of years, um, the basics of Android, of programming in general, of course, and then some of the best practices and some of the mo more advanced topics such as testing and architecture, you know, writing clean code. 
And if you think about it, it all sounds really complex or it, it sounds like there's a lot of things you have to think about or worry about, right? Um, which is what we realized. And we didn't really have our hopes up. We just said, you know, we're, we're going to do our best and try to help people uh, learn Android and get, get into Android development. Um, so there were obviously a lot of things to do. So we, we had to take some first steps. And as I mentioned, we, we organized this in like a couple of weeks at, uh, you know, having a beer with friends. Uh, this is not to say that we were drinking straight for a couple of weeks. We were just, you know, grabbing a beer every now and then. Um, and we, fi we finally got around and realized what steps we need to take to build such a thing. Um, so of course we, we needed people who are willing to teach. Um, so it's not just enough that you have people who are really knowledgeable ab about things or really experienced in a topic, um, because not everyone is comfortable in, in front of a you know, group of students or in front of a camera even, in front of a microphone, even, even though no one actually looks at them, right? Uh, so there's a lot of people who are um, well-versed in Android and Kotlin and Java or uh, still are. Uh, and some of those people might not want to teach because they are not feeling, uh, they're not feeling the situation. They, they don't really feel like that, that's something they, they would be good at or something they, uh, they can do in, in the end. So we had to find people who are willing to teach and who are willing to share their knowledge. Uh, we managed to get about four or five people, uh, four or five different people who, um, you know, somehow we persuaded into teaching a, a you know, big course um, to a bunch of students, uh, after which we created a curriculum and decided on the length. So we kind of thought about it and, you know, Teaching all of these concepts, especially when it comes to more complex topics such as architecture, such as uh, you know clean code, structuring your code, testing, you know all of these things, dependency ingestion, of course, um, all of these topics are very complex, and obviously you can't teach them to someone who has just been writing code for a couple of weeks, right? So we decided to make the academy uh, about three, three and a half months uh, long, uh, which is roughly about twelve to fourteen weeks. Uh, we decided to make it that long because we had a clear, uh, clean structure of we will have one um, one workshop every uh, Saturday for three hours, so three hours long, uh, from about uh, 8 a.m. until 11 uh, a.m. Uh, we will we will teach one topic. So, for example, the first week was uh, basics of Kotlin. The second was uh, more advanced Kotlin. Then, uh, let's say, like week five or six, we started uh, getting into um, after uh, we got into Android, we started getting into uh, databases and networking, some, some of the more complex topics. Um, and not just that, we also decided to have homework in between every um, single week or actually every two weeks. So it's not just important that we teach the, uh, those topics to people and show them through presentations, through certain projects, um, you know, by actually, you know, explaining things on a whiteboard and stuff like that. It's also very important that the students try and play out those, uh, play uh, with those topics. So try try them out because that's when the knowledge really sits in, right? Um, so we had um, different kinds of homework, we graded the homework, uh, and we took this, like the percentage of uh, how well you did on the homework um, as a means to you know, give gra graduation uh, awards and uh, diplomas, so to say, certificates to people who uh, you know, met a certain minimum or criteria, because there were some people who either didn't really you know, want to uh, solve the homework or didn't really come to every single event. And after we, we kind of got through the curriculum, we found the venue, we, we found the equipment we needed, and we decided to you know, kick off the, the academy with a starting and ending date. Um, then, you know, when, when you start or you want to kick off the academy, of course, you had to or we had to uh, get students in. So we released an application form and we wanted to filter out uh, 20 or 25 students because that's our venue capacity and also teaching capacity because we wanted to have every student um, feel like they have enough of individual support and individual mentoring. And we didn't just want to you know, share the, the materials and not give them enough attention uh, and you know, support when it comes to the issues they might, um, they might come to in their projects. Uh, we notified the people uh, and we actually got about 80 plus applications, I think. So nearly 100 applications. We didn't think we would get nearly as many. Uh, and we kind of started the lectures. Now, the good, good and bad side of the, the things here is that because of those 80 plus applications, we could only take 20 people. So this means that we have to kind of reject 60 people or, or even more. Um, and this is kind of a decision I made as like the lead organizer, so to say. 
I wanted to have personalized email uh, this, um, describing every single part of the decision process. So if the person uh, didn't really give enough um, or didn't write enough to describe themselves in their motivational letter or uh, they just didn't have uh, any knowledge or like uh, they had too much knowledge for the t topics we were teaching. So they, they knew even more than that. We realized that we kind of have to find a, a middle ground and uh, teach people who had maybe just a bit, bit of knowledge, uh, but not too much or not uh, too little or any, right? Uh, and we decided on those people. So I had to send personalized emails or I wanted to send personal email to everyone to know them, uh, to know, to let them know why they got rejected to improve their applications in the future. Which sounds like a good thing, but of course people got frustrated. We received a lot of angry emails, insults. We actually had people, uh, people's parents phone in and ask us why their their uh, kid or you know uh, child didn't get into the academy and actually offer us money to <laughs> give them a special slot. Which uh, I of course said no because this is a volunteer thing and we didn't really want to have any kind of you know politics or anything like that here. Um, but it's important to know that, you know, you can please everyone. And after the academy, you know, we were just looking at the results and everything. So how big of an impact we made. Um, and we actually were really surprised to know that we actually made a really, really big impact. Um, out of, so I'll kind of fast forward here. Out of the two academies we did, uh, we did so two um, years of academies, we had over 45 students, so to say. Uh, around 150 applications, and 30 of them finished the academy based on that minimum requirement thing I mentioned. Um, but the really important thing, really big thing, is that more than 60% of them got their first Android internships or jobs right after the academy. Um, and the academy is actually now one of those plus things that uh, companies put on their um, job app or applications, like uh, the the job requests, um, because they started recognizing that we really teach people a lot and that's something that they uh, want to get, get into. So uh, we got about 20 people or more. I, I'm not even sure right now because I haven't uh, been in touch with all of them as much, but we got so many people, their first jobs and uh, internships. And now a lot of those uh, people are actually within the community and giving their own talks and also uh, participating in the academy uh, as we go further. But we realized, you know, in 2020 that after the pan pandemic hit us, we couldn't really do an in-person academy. Uh, and we kind of had to change things up a bit. So uh, right now, so I, I switched to um, Raysware, uh, the company behind the RayWendell.com website, uh, about seven, eight months ago, something like that. And I realized, you know, or uh, as Ray and I talked, uh, we realized that we have so much content online, so much um educational stuff uh, on our website uh, that we could possibly take that and turn it into an online mentoring and an educational academy, which we did. And we uh, called it the Android, uh, are we Android and iOS bootcamp? Um, and we had about two or three weeks to plan everything out, uh, which was a really short period of time, but we managed to do it. And we had kind of the same principles. Uh, we would use the, uh, the content we have on the Ray Bionic website Trans and tr use it to transform beginners or like completely um, new people to IT into junior iOS uh, and uh, Android developers or junior plus. And we were like, okay, if we have about uh, five or 10 people sign up and finish, it will, you know, we'll call it a good day. It'll be a good thing. Well, we did we know that we had over, or that we uh, would blow our expectations by a mile. Um, we actually had several hundred applications, I think like five, 600 of them. So we had to go through all of them, uh, you know, their CVs, their GitHub pages, everything, and write them uh, mails and all that uh, to people who didn't get picked out. But we managed to pick out about 80 people uh, in the end. Um, some of which are, so this is the Android chart, for example, for the country or uh, where the people came from. So we literally had people from all over the world. It's not just like a saying, it's <laughs> an actual fact. So we had lots of people from uh, the USA or like the, the Americas in general, from uh, from Europe, from Asia, from Africa, all over the world, which is a really, really nice thing. And it was kind of a hard thing to organize um, because everyone's from different time zones, but we managed to do it anyway. Um, and the results so far are just spectacular. Like we, we planned it for two, three weeks, something like that. It was very low effort in terms of, plan or like it was a lot of effort in terms of planning, but uh, we couldn't really put in a lot of effort because of the uh, short time frame. 
Um, but we did get over 80 students taken in initially with over half of them uh, graduating based on some criteria as well. Uh, and dozens of those people actually got their first jobs again, uh, their internships, and they even published some of their applications on the Play Store. I've seen some really complex, really cool applications built in a week and then published on the Play Store just based on the uh, on the knowledge we uh, we gave the students and then uh, some of the things they they you know learned in their spare time. So we're definitely looking to organize more boot camps in the future. Um, and I think this is something that this is the the, the kind of the point I'm trying to uh, to you know bring across and. This just shows how much you can do just by you know being enthusiastic, by talking to people in your community, by relying on other folks, by, by trying to build super cool projects and kind of not giving up, so to say, because of the pandemic situation and everything. Um, this started off, I believe, like three something years ago uh, with just a, you know four or five friends sitting uh, on a Friday night at a beer, just talking about you know how hard it was to, to learn stuff and how hard uh, it's how much harder it is now because there's so much more material than when we started uh, and also how we can improve that uh, to people who are just starting off their careers and all of this started as I mentioned with four or five people and now we have a huge project that we want to continue uh, moving on and you can also help out um, with, with all of that so we're Kind of in the process of polishing the bootcamp, polishing uh, the the online bootcamp, the IS and Android bootcamps at RayWendelk.com. We're trying to make it a bit more organized, trying to make it uh, scale better, so uh, we can have like a hundred, two hundred people uh, on a bootcamp with only four or five mentors uh, teaching them, because that's a lot of uh, people to go, uh, you know, to to teach and have an individual approach with. Um, but we're trying to polish it out and. I created this goal forms um, uh, form, I guess, uh, that you can fill in if you would like to see uh, about or hear anything about the, the process of developing the, the bootcamp or once we kind of get around to cleaning up the bootcamp and then preparing all the, all the materials, um, all the structure, all the organization, all the you know, logistics stuff about it, we will be sharing them or the idea is to kind of try and share them to the world and see if your communities, your uh, you know local people can actually organize an academy or a bootcamp of your uh, of your own, and then through that, through our material materials and everything, help out even more people uh, that we probably couldn't reach ourselves. So, if you want to know more about that, you can just reach uh, uh, reach me on LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, RayBendelik.com, which is our website. Uh, Discord, we have a really cool di Discord with about two three thousand people on it. That that's you know just about hanging out and asking any kinds of questions in terms of IT. And th there's also this Google form that I, uh, I'll i share with you where you can you know sign up if you want to hear about the materials uh, for your own communities uh, once we kind of wrap out the process and clean, clean up the project and see about sharing all, all the materials and everything. So thank you for um, you know listening to my talk and to listening to all the uh, challenges we had, all the cool things we did in the community and all the cool things that you can do in the community if you just uh, find uh, you know a couple of people who are willing to help you out and put in the effort um, and all of that can make a huge impact into uh, other people's lives and you can create this big awesome ripple effect that makes the community so much better thank you and are there any questions i guess that was awesome thank you philip uh, and there was a question yeah um, how did you draw the line in terms of how much was too little knowledge to even start a boot camp? What did you recommend people do if they fell into that category? Yeah, so it was really hard to balance that out, and um, especially for for the boot camp uh, we did for uh, the Ray Wendelk website and uh, the academy we did in here in Osiak, um, it was really hard to balance it out because. If you take people who have absolutely no knowledge, right? You can't. Uh, it they they might take a bit more time to just jump into the topics to go through the content you have prepared for them, uh, as opposed to some people who ha who have some basic knowledge. And if you take into account people who have too much knowledge, um, for example, they know all the topics that you're trying to teach through the bootcamp, then it makes little sense for them to actually be on the academy because they they would just be learning the same things over again. So what we did was kind of, you know, um, grade their projects, grade their GitHub uh, profiles and everything based on the, the code they, they wrote uh, from 
one to ten uh, on just you know kind of kind of grading it how well they know programming or how much knowledge they have. And also we graded the motivational uh, side of things. So how well they wrote the motivational letter and what the actual motivation is. Um, and th this is also something that's very subjective to your communities. But for example, in the Android Academy, I I wasn't as inclined to accept people who were just, uh, you know, in their motivational letters, they wrote, you know, Android seems interesting. I want to try it out because that's kind of a show that they might not put in the effort as opposed to some people who, who mentioned that they've been trying to learn Android for months and months and they just can't get to it, into it, but they would really like a mentor or someone to help them out. So it's very subjective in that part of the, like the motivational thing, but in terms of code, we kind of drew the line to take the, the, the middle part of thing of the, the people that um, applied. So we kind of cut out the top 10% and the bottom 10%. Uh, which meant, of course, that some of the people who had absolutely no knowledge uh, couldn't get into it. But we tried to provide all the resources uh, on GitHub for uh, public use and everything like that. And for the um, Ray Wendelik Bootcamp, which was online, we recorded all the talks and they will they are currently up on the website, so you can check them out. Uh, and all the uh, I think all the documentation as well is up there. So all the slides we did and all the homework assignments we did. So we tried to fit or curate those people who we couldn't take in by giving them enough material um, they can they could go through on their own. And then they can, of course, uh, ping us through the Discord community or email or anything like that if they have any questions. So <laughs> hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. That makes sense. That's a good way to, at least for the folks that don't make the cut initially, they can then go through and see the material still at their own pace so they're not completely just without should they yeah. go forward with it. Well, that's awesome. Um, there's lots of clapping in the, uh, the <laughs> panel. Uh, if you guys, if you all have any more questions throughout the rest of the conference, this is the Slack channel to put them in below. Uh, Philip will be around and answer to yep. answer throughout. And uh, we've got about two minutes till the next session. So we will see you all in just a few minutes. Thank you, Philip, for being a part of this. That was an amazing talk. I appreciate you being here. Um, and yeah, we will see everyone in just a few. Yeah, thank you for letting me hang out here and give my talk. Absolutely. See you, folks. Bye.